About esoteric communities today. Последние десятилетия появилось очень много. Lately, there are many esoteric groups rooted in Eastern esoteric tradition. Но почему-то все они поразительно схожи с христианством. But somehow they are all very similar to Christianity. The leaders of these groups stress the ideology of humility, all forgiveness, trust in the will of God, and promote complacency. Is this the result of Eastern teachings being placed over Christianity, like Christianity wearing an Eastern mask, or were such concepts actually a part of Eastern esoteric systems? Both are likely, yes. Most likely, this is a disguise of Abrahamic religions. They are really fond of putting on masks and have absolutely no shame in dressing up in someone else's clothing. But there are also some Eastern trends that promote the principles of non-resistance and humility. There are plenty of those. As a rule, we're talking about esoteric groups, we most likely see here a manifestation of Abrahamism, such as Christianity, Islam or Judaism, or other Abrahamic channels. The leaders of such groups, as you have accurately noticed, are always people. People are the carriers of a particular tradition. And if we are talking about people who live in our environment, who think and exist in a Russian-speaking bubble in particular, then more than likely you will discover that the roots of such groups will lead to Christianity. And the person, the teacher of that esoteric movement, has simply created a specific academic egregore. We can call it that, to fit his needs. As a rule, they are usually created for one's own personal, narrow-minded objectives. They usually lean on some kind of system, because it would be impossible to create a school or a movement otherwise. You can't really do it without leaning on some kind of already existing tradition. Usually schools can't be created from zero. Such schools do not exist. They always appropriate some type of core as a foundation for their teaching, and then they spread their concepts on the foundation of that core. Christian worldview and Christian doctrine is very convenient in this regard, because it right away makes the students humble and grooms them to be submissive, meaning to be submissive and accepting this teaching. They don't argue, they don't reason, they are not searching for meanings like some ancient philosophical schools that existed for to Christianity. Not at all. All Abrahamic religions are built on submissiveness, all of them, without exceptions. Take Judaism, for example, an absolute submission to God. Christianity, absolute submission to God. Islam, absolute submission to God. And other Abrahamic channels, less known, but existing nonetheless, absolute acceptance of the will of God. It should be mentioned that other religious systems, Hellenism, for example, too, promoted complete acceptance of faith, meaning that a person can do but little against the will of gods. Only the gods there were plural. There are very few systems that contrast the person to God, such so-called crusaders against the God, are rare, there are very few of them. But Slavonism, for example, possess this quality. The Norse Scandinavian system possess these qualities, meaning that the Scandinavians and the Slavs had an absolute belief in fate, but that was about the only thing they trusted. Meaning that, here we have our fate, but this doesn't mean that you have to tuck your will somewhere under a rock and never exercise it. Quite the opposite. You must exercise it. You absolutely must exercise it. Despite the fact that you have a fate, to fight this fate is a sacred duty of every self-respecting warrior. This is what they believed. Although, it very well may be that fighting one's fate is pointless. But this doesn't matter, because the meaning doesn't lie in the result, but in the process. The meaning is in the process, the meaning is in the struggle, that is what they believed. In the Eastern and the Southern beliefs and religion, they thought slightly differently, that a person should never ever do this sort of thing, he must be absolutely humble. So humility is the main line of all Abrahamic religions. 
Therefore, if you meet someone who tells you about humility, then you will most likely find Abrahamism in the foundation of his teaching matrix. Abrahamism in this or other form, and again, they're great at disguising themselves in all possible ways. Even Buddhism, with its middle way and its contemplative practices, non-resistance and complete dissolvency of self to the point of transparency to the temporal and spatial current, it actually also does promote the same in essence. They are not creators, they are observers or serf-like implementers. In Abrahamism, the entire worldview concept is built on serfdom. Therefore, yes, most likely, it is most likely so. And it is great that you see it, it's great that you are able to discern. Your intuition should, as you're looking at this type of teacher, before anything, tell you that if this person expects humility from you, then most likely he wants to take your will, your time, your life, and make it follow a certain direction. Either to serve his own vested interests or the forces that are leading him, and such teacher, usually, or actually very often, is completely unaware that he is a serf to a foreign will, a puppet and the hands of more powerful systems, and maybe even people.